Hey everybody, welcome to The Blacklist, the show where we interview the elite, and today we have Bashar. So one thing that I want to mention is his mustache is phenomenal, right? Like, I'd love to do something like that in the future. I'm just too scared to do it. <laughs> so anyways, uh, Bashar, I'm super happy to have you here at the show. Um, for people that don't know you, you know, go ahead and give yourself a brief introduction, and then we'll dive right into it. Sure, man. Well, first, I uh, appreciate you having me on the, on the podcast. Um, seven years ago, I started as a, an Amazon seller. Today, we have a, a coaching business that teaches people how to start businesses on Amazon. We have a mission to impact one million lives. Yeah. So far, we're about, you know, only about five or 6,000 in. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that, that's that's what we do. That's what we're focused on. Yeah. Let me ask you, because I've, I, I speak to a lot of people where they say, like, the impact is this, right? Where, like, you know, like yours, like they want to impact a million lives. Why does that matter to you? 2018, I had a conversation with a uh, friend of a uh, friend of mine, and he asked me a question, which I usually ask everyone I meet. And the question was, "Where do you see yourself in the next three to five years?" And that was about three years after I had started uh, selling on Amazon, and I was successful, making multiple seven, seven year uh, seven figures a year, and uh, and I couldn't answer him. Yeah. And that's because I started selling on Amazon to clear my debt to retire my parents, because uh, I had a, another business venture prior to that. And uh, I lost hundreds of thousands of dollars, almost a million dollars, actually. And that's why I got into online and, and, and you know, selling on Amazon specifically. And so the, the plan was, like, everything up until that point was about me. I wanted to take care of me. Yeah. But I don't know if you've heard of uh, Tony Robbins talks about the, the science of achievement and the art of fulfillment. And the science of, science of achievement is about when you achieve something. And that, it's a science, right? So it's about going to school, getting a degree, starting a business, becoming a millionaire, whatever. But the art of fulfillment, it's when you actually find joy, find happiness about the thing that you're doing. Yeah. And usually you cannot find that unless it's about other people. This is why Tony will get a call, you know, this, this star, multi-millionaire, multi-billionaire that's having a breakdown. And when he goes and kind of diagnoses the situation... It's because the last decades, they've only been focused on them. I want to achieve this. I want to get the gold medal. I want to make a billion dollars. I want to do this for me. Right. But the guy that's happy is doing things for other people. And that's when I realized that I needed to do something for others. Yep. And I had found a skill, and I realized that Bashar, five years ago, would have appreciated me sharing this skill with them. And so that's why we started BJKU. Yeah, I like that. And you said right now you're like at 5,000 and 6,000 people. How does that look like? What's the transformation look like for them? So um, there is this thing of, um, you know, a few people online we both follow, pe people like Gary Vee and others, right. you know, are always running around saying, you know, follow your passion. If you, if, you, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And I have a saying, fuck your passion. Because if you, when you're, when you're unless you, unless when you first started, you were a two-year-old kid, you picked up a soccer ball and you started playing, you, you know, picked up a, a paintbrush and started painting, you don't necessarily have a skill, right? Like I know I, I didn't have a skill. I didn't have, to, I wasn't passionate about something, right? Yeah. And so me trying to like discover my passion when I'm 150K in debt, when I have debt collectors calling me every day, when I can't even get a credit card for $300, I have to come from place of abundance for me to think of what is my passion. And at that stage, I'm coming from place of scarcity. Right. And right. I think that's where a lot of people are starting from. Is that, is that right? Absolutely. 100%. At least 90% of, of people that we help. Yeah. Right? And so my goal is I want to help you financially so that you can discover your passion. So Got today it. we're focused on providing them a skill that they can turn into income within 90 days or less. Yeah. And then the goal in the future is to also have um, programs that support their emotional you know, uh, 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 relationships, their, their relationships with their spouses, their friends, whatever it is, their health. Because at the end of the day, really, the, the success as a human starts when you start making money, right. not before. Yeah. Because when you start making money is when you actually start getting into real trouble. Now yeah. you have money. Now you think you're the shit. Now you got to pay taxes. Exactly. <laughs> right. And so that's the, the actual, like, discovery for success really starts. So we started only three years ago with, uh, with uh, helping them discover their financial or, or, or gain their financial uh, freedom or gain financial stability. Yeah. And then the goal in the future is, is to first um, present other skills, which would be going into other horizontals because it's a university, right? And then from there, tackle other aspects of life. Yeah. 
Um, so about the university aspect, um, so I've done, you know, um, well, tried to do before. I, I'm, I'm in the done for you service. So like for me, I tried to do coaching before or something like that. Um, however, I've noticed that a lot of people don't take action, right? right? They'll buy programs and they'll buy them just to have them like on a bookshelf, right? Where they don't do anything with them. Um, how do you make sure that the client experience or the customer experience is, you know, phenomenal throughout so that way they do end up getting the result? So um, there's a platform that we currently use. It's called School, and it was uh, created by my mentor, Sam Ovens. Um, and it's, it combines communities, courses. It's for digital creators and, and webinars, all that stuff in one, one platform. Is it like Mighty Networks where it's like a community kind of? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm not okay. sure what Mighty Networks oh. is, but I just know it has everything all together. Yeah. Right? And so in his uh, platform, there are 6,000-something communities, and our community is the highest engaged. Wow. In fact, we have a couple of students really that good. yeah, we have a couple of students that sometimes break their algorithm because they post and they're engaged just too much. Yeah. You know? Um, and the reason why is we invest a lot in our students. Uh, first, we do a bunch of like webinars where we where where our program is forty eight hundred dollars. Yeah. When you come out of that program, you feel like you got about fifteen to twenty grand worth of value, and it's from you know uh, webinars to coaches helping them to. Um, we, we incentivize celebration a lot. Like you got a sample, celebrate it. You know, you got this, celebrate it, right? Yeah. Because we, we understand that we're dealing with a, a, um, with someone that not only is a beginner to entrepreneurship, but someone that has a lot of limiting beliefs and doesn't necessarily have the right settings or the right environment. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's about the environment that you're in, right? If, if your parents or your spouse or your friends or whatever, are you know sleeping late, uh, uh, sleeping in late, you know, not taking care of their bodies, not taking care of their finances, stuff like that. Those are the habits that you're going to take, and you trying to break out of that, it's going to be very uncomfortable, right? And you're not going to have people holding you accountable. So that's what we create for them in there. It's about the environment. It's not necessarily the skill. The skill, yes, it's there. That's we true. teach the skill, but we we focus a lot on everything else, on the mindset. We have a mindset trainer that comes in three times a year that does an eight week class that teaches them about mindset, changing their habits, you know, uh, breaking their limiting beliefs, right? Because we understand, because like when I first started the the course, when I created the very verse, first version was video one, week one, how to find a product. Yeah. And I had like 70% I feel like that's everybody. refund rate. Yeah, exactly. I feel yeah. like everybody has that stuff, you know, where right. it's like, yeah. And I had like a 70% refund rate. People were like, dude, this is way too overwhelming. And then yeah. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm not dealing with, I'm not dealing with me, you know? I feel like I was just, I don't know. I just always had like a stronger mentality, you know, but the everyday person doesn't. And, and, and you just have to know where they're coming from and cater to them. Yeah. Personally, I'm like the complete opposite of you. You do done for you. Yeah. I try doing for done for you. And it's like, dude, that's just too much work. <laughs> yeah. There's too much back and forth. And then, you know, uh, your customer becomes just too needy and too dependent on you. And it's like, I don't want to touch that. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Cause for me, I can't, I can't do what you do, you know? Done for, done for you for me is like uh, just easy. It's like um, it's just I can control the entire result, sure. you know, so I, I like that. But um, I love that you found a way that gives them an experience where you're like, okay, they can't just be given the knowledge, they, you know, or the how to. They also have to be prepped here, prepped there. And many, many people think it's cliche, but, you know, working on your mindset is literally the number one thing you have to do first before you can start doing anything else. Like it's like the, you know kind of like the basics almost, right? Before you can start like learning a skill and implementing it and, you know, doing that type of stuff. Is that, is that true? Yeah, there is something that Tony Robbins talks about a lot and I'm going to mention him a lot because he's, uh, he's truly made an impact in my life. And, yeah. and recently I joined his uh, kind of most intimate um, uh, group and, and he's been really a, a big factor in, in my success. But um, he talks about how um, your potential, your maximum, you reaching your maximum potential you are the bottleneck of your of of the reason why you're not reaching your maximum potential. Yeah, and it's it's two parts. It's psychology and skill, but it's twenty percent skill and eighty percent psychology. Yeah, right. And what do we do? We focus on skill. That's Over true. the last twelve years, I've been like just head on to reading books and attending masterminds and taking courses and consultants and all that stuff and just like sharpening my skills. Right. But then the psychology, it's like, dude, that's the thing that's the bottleneck. That's the thing that we need to work on. And unfortunately, it's not that easy to go to someone who is, you know, 
broke in debt or, or just has a, a pretty bad financial situation and say, hey, bro, you yeah. know, if you want out of this, let me fix your mindset. They'll be like, go fuck yourself. Yep. But it's easier to go and say, hey, let me help you make 10 grand a month and then work on their mindset, right? Yes. It's kind of like give them what they or sell them what they want, give, give them, them what they need, need right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. And how do you get people out of that? Um, you know, so I feel like sometimes people are just so stuck in their mindset. Like I know a few people that are just like, man, they love the dread. I feel like where they're just like completely, you know, sad about life and everything, you know, happens to them, not for them and yeah. all that stuff. Um, you know, I, and I know this isn't, you know, your specialty or whatever, but I feel like you have a very good understanding because you've invested a lot in yourself. Um, how do you get some of those people that are just so stubborn just out of that mentality? You know, I, um, and if they're watching, I love you guys, but my brother, uh, and my sister, uh, and, and even my spouse, um, I tried for the longest time to impose the perfect reality on them Yeah. because I felt like my perfect, my, my version of perfect, they didn't match. It was like, this is my version of perfect. This is where they're operating. I need them to go there. Yeah. And so what was I doing for literally years? is that I was imposing, hey, look, this is where you could be. This is where you're operating. Let me help you get there. But one thing that we don't, we don't, uh, um, we don't realize is that we set expe expectations on other people, expecting them to operate at a certain level because we think that that is the formula for perfection. Yeah. Well, have you thought of their side? On their, just like how you think that's the, 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 the perfection for you, for them, that's what perfection looks like. Yeah, that's And true. what I've realized is and instead of trying to coach people and, and trying to change them to fit your mold, offer love, support, and care. That's the only thing you can do. And that's the thing that I've been honestly learning more about over the last few months and reading books about and attending you know, seminars and things like that about is if you truly care about someone and you believe that they are not operating at their max potential, and instead of trying to coach them or, or, or trying to change them, to fit your mold of perfection, right. offer them love, support, and care. Yeah. And then when you do that enough, now if you do that for one or two days and it's like, well, they're not changing, I don't know what to do, you know? You gotta keep doing that because look, for 30, 40, 50 years, they've been you know, doing a set thing and then you're trying to change that in like a week, it's not gonna work, yeah. right? But then if you're gonna build that, that connection with them over years or you know, weeks, months, years, at some point they might come to you and say, hey, you know, You've done pretty well here in this area of life. I want to learn from you. And that's when you can ease your way into it. Yeah. But you trying to come and dump things on at them, trust me, it won't work. I try to do it for years, and it just blew up in my face every time. No, I agree with you. I've tried as well. And uh, now that you're saying that, makes so much sense, you mm. know, because I, you know, I feel like sometimes it's clear for us of our version of success. Right. Like, you just got to fix it right here. You got to fix it right here, right? And then... But, you know, for them, it's not something that they want or look for or need. Um, so that's powerful. Take me back to when you were in that mindset before you had the success. Um, how did you end up getting started and finding, you know, this and getting out of debt and all that? So I don't know if I almost want to say, and, and this, this might sound arrogant, but I almost never was in that mindset and that like rut. Really? Like I was there, but I wasn't there. Like my mentality, I mean, obviously my mentality wasn't like what it is today, but I feel like I always had a, okay, I'm going to sound like an arrogant prank right now, <laughs> but I always had like a, a more advanced mentality to my level of financial success. Yeah. Right. But that's the only thing I chased though for the longest time up until literally five months ago. Um, is that I only uh, chased financial success because to me it was success means finances. That's yep. it, yep. right? Um, and so at us, a very early age, my father was in the 80s and 90s, my father was a successful entrepreneur back, in, back home in Iraq. That's where I'm from. Yeah. And he owned the second largest factory of clothing in Iraq. And he was worth like tens of millions of dollars in the 80s and 90s. But then uh, the, uh, there was a, like a, a thing with the government and things like that. And uh, the Iraqi dinar went from like, one dinar equaling three dollars to one dollar equaling twelve hundred dinars. So he went from a multi-millionaire to completely broke literally overnight. Yeah. And and like the first 10, 15 years of my life, this is all we were. We we looked wealthy on the outside, but we were like cash poor because we didn't have a cash flowing business. Yep. Um, but I always aspired to be an entrepreneur like him. I always aspired to be like my dad. 
And although in high school and, and early college, my mom sold me on the idea that you need to become a doctor in order for you to make it in life. And I started going to school and doing all that uh, because we migrated to the U.S. in 2006. And she was like, look, whatever you had in mind prior to that in Iraq, that was, isn't going to work. In America, if you want to make it, go to school, get a degree, get a, get a good job, right? And Freeman was like, all right, I'm a high achiever. I'm going to go become a doctor, you know? Yeah. And then I was like, this is just not for me. But then after I got into owning my own business and I had a restaurant and three, after three years of owning it, uh, the, the restaurant caught on fire. Uh, first I wasn't doing good. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I thought I knew it all. And then I, I, um, I had not paid my insurance bill for four months. The place caught on fire during uh, oh, a service, uh, yeah. uh, during a service at, at uh, 5 PM. And then I lost everything. I had invested about half a million dollars. I came out of it about 150 K in debt. And there was about a two to four month period where I did go into that victim mentality. Can, can I stop you real quick? Sure. I mean, how did you have the $500,000 to invest in so, the first place? Okay. So, um, good question. Good catch. So the first 15 years of my life, we were cash poor, but my dad owned a bunch of real estate in Iraq from, you know, his businesses prior to that. Got it. After around 26, 2006, 2007, he was able to liquidate some properties. And then um, it was kind of like my college fund. Got so it. he he transferred 200K into my account. Damn. And he said, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he said, and a lot of people watch him like, well, your daddy gave you 200K. Yeah, you know what I'm exactly saying? Like right. you started with 200,000. Sure, let me get there. Yeah. Um, he said, this is your college fund. Your mom wants me wants you to become a doctor. Go become a doctor or do whatever the hell else you want to do. And I was like, yeah. I'm starting a business. Yeah. You know? So I dumped 200000 in there. And over the following three years, whatever money I made from the restaurant, I put it back into the restaurant. Got it. Here. I worked 120 hours every single week for three years, made zero money. And that's where the the 500 k ended up from, right? Yeah. Got it. After I, I lost the restaurant, my landlord sued me because I was only about three years into my five-year lease, so he sued me for the remaining. Really? Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's uh, how... Because of the insurance, though? Well, not the insurance, but there, I, I was in a five-year lease. Yeah. It was $5,000 a month or something it, like didn't that. Didn't it burn down, though? So. Yeah, but I'm still liable. Oh, shit. Yeah, and then he that. got pissed because, like, dude, you're a dumbass. Who, who doesn't have insurance? Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. I owed the IRS, like, 40 some thousand dollars Yeah. All those, like, you know, all, you know, racked up debt here and there, the credit cards and stuff like that. And so it came out of that with 150K. And this is where I really started. Yeah. Right? I started with $150,000 in debt. And what year was that? This was 2015. Okay. So the restaurant burnt down on April 28th, 2015, 5 p.m. Pacific. It was, I think, uh, wow. It was like Tuesday or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I, dude, I remember the day like it was yesterday. Yeah. And, um, and so from there, that's when I kind of like went into the rut. And then for like two, three months, I realized that all this was like fantasy world. This is the real life. Screw all those big dreams, dude. You got to just deal with life. Yeah. And I went, this is where the mustache actually came from. That's another <laughs> story we can go into if you want. But that's where I found myself living there for a little bit. But fortunately, I, I had a girlfriend at the time who's now my wife. Um, that was like, dude, you like, I've never heard anyone talk about big things before. And now you're like here, I know you're destined for more. You can do more. Don't let this be the end of you. Let it be a, a learning lesson. Yeah. And, you know, weeks, months came by and, and I pulled myself out of it. And that's very casual to kind of, you know, pull yourself out of it. But um, that's good, dude. That's good. So uh, one thing is like, you know, a lot of people talk about like when you're starting getting, when you're starting to get finances and you have debt um, or investments or things like that, people don't know what to put it in first, right? They don't know if they, they need to pay off the debt first, if they need yeah. to pay off their taxes, if they need to pay off the credit with the highest interest, if they need to pay off or buy, you know, buy assets that can pay off that stuff. Um, what did you do and what do you recommend? Yeah, I have a pretty weird recommendation here. Yeah. Don't pay shit. Really? Don't fuck it all. And, and, and do what? <laughs> Just So, so here, 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 reinvest back in your business, grow your business, grow, grow, grow your top line. Yeah. And I was offered a $60,000 because right after my restaurant burned down, I went into, I started driving for Uber and washing dishes at Hilton hotels. Yeah. And one of the main reasons was because I, um, I had the last payroll to pay and I couldn't pay it because I had no money in the bank. All of my employees lived in the same city and I would get like death threats every day. Like if I see you, I'll beat your ass. Damn. You know? Yeah. And honestly, 
like I, I don't hold anything against them because it's like they were, you know, working, you know, they were living hand to mouth. Yeah. And the fact that everything is gone now, it's like for them, you know, they get to this point where it's just frustration. It's like, dude, I didn't want my money. And it's like, because to them, it's like, you're the business owner. You're supposed to have this shit figured out right? because we're depending on you, yeah. you know? And so I take full responsibility for that. I should have never put them in that situation. And if you're starting a business, you never want to put people in such situation. Yeah. Like that's selfish and that's fucked up. Yeah. Right. And so, um, that's when I got a, a job offering 60 K a year plus benefits. And at the time I was like, 60K a year, that's not bad. You know, I was 25 years old. I'm like, shit. Yeah. But then I started doing the math. I'm like, to clear my debt, and I'm about to get married and all that. It'll take me like 15, 20 years just to clear my debt. Yeah. And that's when I realized that, like, look, at the time, my credit was fucked up. I had two repos on my credit. Damn. I couldn't even get a credit card anywhere. Wells Fargo wouldn't even let me open a bank account with them. Yeah. And let alone give me a credit card. And by the way, having generated, you know, tens of millions of dollars over the last few years, I barely got my first credit card November of last year. What? So everything you've been paying in cash, debit? Pretty much. Pretty much. And I'm talking about I have, I have multiple seven figures in the bank, yeah. and they still won't give me a credit card because yeah. my credit score was so bad, and I had all these things on my credit. Because yeah. in America, luckily, you know, it's, it's such a, an awesome system is that when you have things on your credit, they stay on your credit for, I think, five or seven years or something like yeah. that. And so just now they started clearing and you know, now I have a 750 credit score. But that's good. up until a year ago, I couldn't do anything, you yeah. know? So for me, it was like, look. So you really had to figure it out because you couldn't borrow. You couldn't borrow money at all. I couldn't do shit. Yeah. I couldn't do shit. And so that's the thing. It was like I was at the point where everything was fucked up. It's like I can't get anything. I can't get a loan. I can't do this. So it's like screw the debt collectors. You know, I at some point I would literally walk into my office and I would have a table this big and there would be like letters like, like lawsuit here. Uh, debt here, collection here. This thing. There was like maybe 10 or 15 different things. And it just became so overwhelming. It's like, where do you even stop? Cho start that, chopping it? Did that scare you at all? Dude, it scared the shit out of me. There were, for about four to six months, almost every night, I would go to sleep thinking I'll probably not wake up tomorrow morning. Damn. Because of the stress. Yeah. You know? Like, just so much. And, and it wasn't even just that. It was... Um, I didn't have a way out. It was like it wasn't like I was working on a way out. It was just like I don't know where the hell to go. Yeah. Like I don't know what life is going to look like in 5 years. You know? Yeah. And so for me it was just like once I found a business, it was like screw all this other shit. It's like look, they can keep calling. I changed my number. You know, I was like screw it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I was just like I'm just going to focus on my business. And the cool thing what happens is something like the IRS. I owed $47,000. I called when I had cash, and I was like, hey, I'll give you 20. Let's settle. Send it over. Settled. This guy, I owe, you know, 15 grand. I'll give you five. Let's settle. Okay, settled. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like, look, it's already been two years. You know, I can, I can get on a payment plan and pay you 100 bucks for the next 65 years. Yeah. Or I can pay you this much cash. And settle. And, so, and settle. And so if you are in debt, if things are just not going right for you, and you start, start making money, dude, screw the debt. Yeah. Focus on building your business first. Yeah. Powerful. I don't. I don't think I've I've heard that before. Most people, kind of like I was telling you, right? They tell you to pay off your uh, credit cards with the highest interest. They tell you to do this. They tell you to do profit first, stuff like that. Um, but that's a good strategy, I'd say. Right? It like, worked for me. I'm not saying it's the best strategy. I, I'm just saying this is what I did, and it worked for me. Right. Right. But I I do think like people that are starting out, because I think this is pretty fair to say, a lot of people when they start out, they don't know that you have to pay. They do know you have to pay taxes but they don't get a good accountant or they don't do it correctly, whatever. So they, they end up owing, you know, maybe a couple of years or whatever that happened to me. Yeah. So, um, you know, doing that and settling when you do have cash, it's gone, you know, like yeah. that's, that's very good. Um, and so good advice. So right now, um, what's your, I, I know your goal you said is to impact a million lives. Um, and right now you're at five to 6,000 students. Um, are you expanding into anything else other than what you're currently doing, or are you just going all in with that every single day? So um, our main, um, our top two core values were focus and kiss. Kiss is keep it simple, stupid. So for the last three years, is we've only done one thing and one thing only, and that's like one thing of everything. You know, one whoops, one funnel, one offer, one just n nothing just else. Optimizing, just it optimizing, us. right? And then now we got to a, a level where it's like, all right, we've optimized the shit out of this. Now we need to start like growing within it. So the, the the plan right now for the next year is to grow within the Amazon space as vertical as possible. So 
we want to launch a kind of like a back end mastermind to help because we have a lot of students that are doing, you know, tens of thousands of dollars a month. Yeah. But our, our program is more tailored for starting you on Amazon, right? Got so we want to do something to like take them from multiple five and multiple seven, uh, six to multiple seven figure sellers, right? Yeah. And then from there, um, we also want to go into other like verticals within Amazon. But the plan 2024 and beyond is go to other verticals within the skill building um, you know, consumer market, I guess. Which is like say. masterminds and stuff like that. Yeah. So it'd be like still coaching, coaching programs, like teaching people a skill because yeah. for us, we don't, it's not a, like we teach you how to make money online. Yes, but it's a skill is what we're teaching you. Yeah. Right. And so one skill is Amazon. Right. And we see our, ourselves as a university. It's like you go to a university to get a, an associates in biology and associates in engineering and associates and whatever. So right now our program is an associates in Amazon selling. Yeah. Right. And so we want to have a bachelor's in Amazon selling, and then we want to have other associates and other verticals, right? So associates in remote sales. We have a 50-person sales team. We know how to, you know, yeah. build people to be, you know, beasts of, of sales, uh, of sales reps. Uh, marketing could be crypto, could be stocks, could be whatever, you know. There's a bunch of people that want to do things uh, online, especially. Maybe Amazon is not their thing. And so we want to go into those spaces and then from there, uh, once we have the, kind of the front end built out, which is helping you make money, now I want to focus on helping you become a fool, a fully rounded human. Yeah. S truly successful. Yeah. My five pillars of success are uh, health, spirituality, gratitude, and contribution. Um, I have one more, and I forgot. Uh, 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 wealth, and there is one more. I just... Uh, Skip my mind. So these are my five pillars of success. Uh, before, for the last 12 years, it was just one, which was financial success, and that's it. Yeah. Right? Uh, so what I want to do is uh, I want to build them their financial success first, and then I want to focus on the rest because you have money in the bank, great. But if you have no relation, if you have a shitty relationship with your wife or your husband, if you barely see your kids, if you don't see your parents, if you, you know, if your health is, if you're overweight and and you know your health is shit. It's like, who cares about your money? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's mind boggling to me because when people get to a level of success like that, that's true. They, they talk about, you know, health, spirituality, like, you know, well-being. Um, I just had uh, Jeff Fenster. He was the first guy that was on here. Yeah. And he was talking about the same thing. And then I had another guy. His name's Pascal. He was talking about his core four with health, wealth, wellness, you know, all that stuff. Um, and I think all that comes right after the, the money part. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, and it, does, it, does it come to you just like this? Like where it's like, okay, now I know this is what I truly need. Because you you're, you figured out the finances portion, it's like this is my impact play. This is how I feel most fulfilled. Because um, you know, a lot of people are, are are in that same space where they make money and they're like, all right, this is just one portion of my life. When there's so many other things that need to be fixed. So I had the 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 mission of impacting people's lives, but it was only about impacting their lives financially up until now because that was the only thing I was focused on up until May 21st of this year. Yeah. I was walking down the supermarket with my wife. I started feeling dizzy. I fell on the floor and had a seizure for the first time in my life. Oh, fuck, yeah. Um, ended up an hour later in the hospital, and they told me that I had a seizure. And uh, over the following weeks and months, up until now, I dealt with levels of anxiety and panic attacks I had never dealt with. In fact, you know, coming in here today was a little hectic for me. I have launched nine businesses, seven of which failed. I've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars that never caused the amount of anxiety that this health crisis caused. Yeah. And I feel like it's because it happened out of nowhere. First, I had no, like all the financial crisis that I had, it's like I saw them coming, right? Although my restaurant burning, it's like I didn't see that coming, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's like it's in front of me. I can touch it. I can feel like I can do something about it, you know? I, you know, I'm, I'm 5'10", almost 150 pounds. I work out four or five times a week. I have a chef that comes home and like cooks pretty, you know, healthy stuff for us. Yep. So I thought I was living a pretty healthy lifestyle. Yeah, and for that to happen after all that, like if this happened two, three years ago and I was like stressed out and stuff like that, I'd be like, yeah, I Makes get sense. it. Yeah. You know, but all that to happen now is like, what the hell? And this is when I realized that there is a lot more to life. And for, especially after having moved to Miami and spent the last year and a half, just kind of like focused on growing my business. Yep. I realized that I had sacrificed everything else in my life. You know, last time I spoke to my brother, oldest brother who lives in, in Iraq still, was probably like two, three years ago. 
Yeah. Uh, last time, you know, my parents, I talk to them maybe once a month. Every time my mom tries to call me, you know, I talk to her two, two five minutes. Ba- uh, mom, I, I gotta, you know, I gotta go. I have a meeting, blah, blah, blah. And so I realized that there are other things that I've completely neglected in my life. And that what if, because some of the reason why I was having anxiety was, dude, there, what if there's something wrong with my brain? Like, what if I have a tumor? Right. What if I'm about to die in six months? You yeah. know, it's like, holy shit, all these things that I haven't done in my life. And so all these stars started coming up, and that's when I realized, it was like, what if I only have six months? What the hell am I going to do? Yeah. You know? And so I started looking at life in a complete, like from a completely different lens, and that's where I was like, all right, if I'm going to truly impact someone's life, I need to do all this for them as well. But I, I, can't, I can't start here. I need to start with their finances because they need to have that figured out first so that I can take their focus away from yeah, but, you know, I, I can't do this, and then I got credit card debts, and I got this, yeah. to I want to work on my health. I want to work on my relationships with my wife or husband. I want to work on, you know, discovering my higher power, you know, my relationship with God or whoever else you, you believe in. I, I'm not, I don't discriminate, you know what I mean? Um, because all those things are really important. Yeah. Dude, well, powerful story. I appreciate you being on the show. Um, where can people find you? Instagram at Bashar JK2. Cool. Is that the only place? Uh, for now, yes. And, and there are probably like a dozen other Bashars. Uh, it's the one that has 2.7, 2.8 million. Just make sure you follow that one. Cause people are like trying to make fake accounts and yeah. scam others. And please don't follow anyone else. Just, just, just the one page. Cool. Well, dude, thank you so much. Appreciate you, you having it. me. Thank you very much.